we talked about Forbes before in writing, and obviously I'm a writer, and um, and so you write for Forbes, right? Um, yes. So I wanted to ask you about that as well. Like, uh, how did that come about? And uh, yeah, well, tell me, like, how did it come about that you started writing for Forbes, I guess? Uh, so when I was with Bleach Report, I had an editor and uh, she was really great in terms of understanding wrestling and being able to either pitch stories or I would pitch stories and she would understand where I was going with it and she'd be able to make them better in terms of suggesting certain things and whatnot. And that's pretty rare in the sports world is somebody who's an editor who likes wrestling because so many of my editors, even to this day, they, they say, well, I don't know anything about wrestling, so you're off on your own, which I'm fine. I, I'm fine being off on my own, but it does help my work to have somebody invested in wrestling. And she was. Mm. So she was my first editor, uh, Bailey, and um, she worked for Bleach Report. So we would kind of bounce ideas off each other for wrestling content. And then Forbes saw what Bleach Report was doing and wanted to create its own version of that. They wanted to create a, a sports imprint where you just kind of uh, you're just on there talking about wrestling and you have these kind of freelance writers talking about wrestling or talking about all kinds of different sports so they brought her on and she suggested we need to do a wrestling arm because at bleacher report even though the nfl is the most popular sport nothing touches wrestling in terms of the viewership because mm -hmm. the wrestling audience is very underserved so when she went to forbes she pitched me you know unbeknownst to me she pitched me as like i'm there's this guy that i work with that you know we should have on the on Forbes, I think he'd be great. So she reached out to me. She DM'd me and said, like, hey, I just started at Forbes and I'd love for you to join the team. And, you know, it was kind of a no brainer because, you know, the editors that I would have a Bleach reporter, you know, even the editors today, because she's not there anymore. I really do appreciate having an editor who knows about like wrestling and nothing against these editors. You know, wrestling is a very kind of underground. You know how it is. Yeah. Uh, it's starting to come back to the mainstream now. But it, for so long, it's just this thing where not everybody watches it, you know, that it's not at its peak, or at least it hasn't been until recently. So it really did help having somebody who knew about wrestling. And so that's, I just kind of trusted her and I followed her to Forbes. And you've done some really cool things. Like I believe you, uh, you interviewed Tony Khan for, was that for Forbes or was that During for Better Days. No, that was for Forbes. Mm -hmm. um, that was a pretty good interview. It was all right. It's funny because it like, was great. Um, yeah, this was, it was a great interview. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> I love Alfred and, uh, you know, maybe we'll hire him, but maybe not. He better be nice to me. Huh? <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Let's fucking go. <laughs> so, like, we we had a pretty good interview, what I would consider a good interview. And it's funny because, you know, I'm kind of painted in his brush as like an AW hater, which I, whatever you want to say about me, say about me. Me too, man. My name, I, like, I like, get it. I get it. That's how they are. <laughs> this is part of the, the downfall of AEW right now. And I'm not wishing death on them or anything, but. The, I think one of the things that really hurts AEW is that audience gets so offended when you criticize them. And people like yep. you and I, they need people like, like we are somebody that they need to be putting their arms around because we watch the product. We engage right. with the product. Okay, yeah, the things we have to say about it aren't all that great. But I mean, now you've got some of these AEW like loyalists who are now turning on the product for things that we've been saying for yeah, years. JD from NY. <laughs> yeah, he's now, yeah, he's now, you know, he adjusting his me. clan's robe to talk about AEW. You know, he's <laughs> got a whole whole out of his mouth to talk about AEW. So yes, you know, even the, you know, he's sitting on his clan's horse from 10 feet above talking about <laughs> AEW. And a lot of people are now shitting on AEW, but like, this is what's been happening. It's just like, it's, it's, and I say this because I was once on great terms with AEW. It's so funny how things turn in terms of like AEW was going head to head with NXT and I had nothing but good things to say about AEW. I loved Me AEW. Yeah. And it's, I would report every week. I would write articles about, cause I covered the entire Wednesday night wars and every week, you know, all but like five or six weeks, AEW beat NXT. And so I would write these out and the WWE people would get pissed off. It's the same thing that's happening now, but in reverse, like WWE people would get mad and make their excuses. But like WWE product in 2019 was shit. Like McMahon was, shit. was at his worst. I called it the senile era <laughs> and it was like a horrible product. And now the shoes on the other foot. And now that I'm just saying what's happening, that mm. WWE is way better. They're making more money than ever. AEW is falling down the tubes. They have no leadership. All this stuff that is true. Like now it's AEW took all their access away from me, which I do not care about. Uh, but they used to give me everybody. I interviewed Kenny Omega. I interviewed Jericho. I interviewed Tony Khan, as you know. I interviewed AEW's biggest stars, Darby Allen. But then once it, I, I saw, and it wasn't even when AEW was going down. I just started to notice 
you know, as a black man, I'm one of the few people who covers wrestling from a black standpoint. Like mm -hmm. before anything else, I'm going to look at wrestling as a as a black wrestling of the analyst, not observer. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> as a black wrestling no, analyst. Sir. Give me a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put him over. But the thing is, I came out, the turn for AEW happened when I, I did this article, and it was about like Boy, I would really like to see more black people on AEW TV. There's, I only, I didn't say that to be woke or like diversity and all that. No, stuff. No, I get it. Yeah, I said it because black people are cool. And mm -hmm. Black people are the key to cool. And if mm -hmm. you know how, if you find out how to write for some of this black talent that I know is talented on your roster, the Keith Lee's at the time, like Swerve Strickland wasn't there yet, but he was, you know, on his way there. And there was so much black talent that was there that was not being used. My thing was just like AEW is becoming this like in the underground thing that's really going to separate and they're going to go down the tubes if they rely on this you need to start booking black people and of course they took it as oh he's, he thinks aw is racist and then they took all they, they got so petty with me and i think this is hilarious so there's this media library where you get the pictures for aew right so when i'm writing okay. articles i could just go it's just a password that you enter you get the media pictures and you put them on your articles and stuff. right right same yeah. thing as using google it's really not that different it's right. just like I, one I, less yeah. step I've worked right? with it. Yeah, I've done. I've yes. call, write columns and stuff, and I've had access to things yes. similar to that. So yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So the yeah. day after I, I put that article, the video out about it, all elite white people, and I'm making fun of them, and just kind of, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to kind of push. The, I'm using comedy to over exaggerate a problem that they did have. You know, right. that there's not a lot of black talent on TV. The day after I came out with that article, they took away my media access to this library. Like they. Either they had to change the password just because a little old me so that everybody else can get access except me. Yeah. So it's like, you can't even look at our pictures anymore. That's Jeez. how mad they were at me. It, it's like, I could get these pictures. I just have to Google them. But like, so it, it's fine. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a guy who goes out here because I need access or anything like that. I just, I just want to cover wrestling to, you know, hang out with people like you to where we can just kind of joke yeah. around about it and have fun doing it. Right. And it's, and to, to tie in the wrestling and the comedy aspect it's like that's what jokes and comedy is supposed to do yes. is we highlight the funny shit or the stereotype or the thing that is like the the funniest shit is always like the stuff that everybody does every day but like somebody words it in a way where like you didn't think of it or you couldn't like say it that way i know you know what i'm trying to say here yes it's, that's absolutely that, those are the funniest understand. bits when someone just points out like the simplest thing that everyone does but they explain it in a way where you're like Oh, uh, that's, or they, you know, use an analogy or however. Um, but that's, that's like my approach to like earlier you brought up, you were like, I want to be like weekend update of, of, um, wrestling. Right. I got, I got into like an argument with SRS back in the day and that's like, <laughs> who has it? Yeah. And that's what I, that's what I told him. I'm like, no, like he's telling me to retract. He's in my YouTube comments telling me to retract things. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm not the news, bro. Like I'm SNL. You're CNN. Like, let's get that straight. And, straight now. Like I make jokes about this shit and I'm just being funny. And you, you are like trying to be taken credible as like a news source. So I think I agree with you that we have to laugh about some of this shit. If the tribalism and all that's going to go away, we got to poke fun. We have to be objectively true to what you said you started being objective about aew and i'm a diehard like you uh, as far as aew i watch it all even to this yeah. day and it's like i early on as well i started sort of falling off the wagon not early on but it was just like a few couple few years deep and i really feel like that pandemic era they just fell off so hard and mm -hmm. and then when they came out of that you just saw that Tony didn't have like his best storylines ready and waiting. He's still just doing matches. And it's like, okay, dude, you used up that goodwill that we gave you at the start where you could kind of get away with just doing um, really good matches or whatever. And um, yeah, like you said, WWE was in the shits and then they start to turn it around and then AEW sort of trending the other way. And then it just seems like coping, attacking, excuses, conspiracy theories yeah. uh, to justify everything. I was listening to 83 Weeks uh, with Eric Bischoff and Conrad Thompson. Bischoff. Yeah. And so and shout them out. And I was listening to them today and they're talking about how or they were reading an excerpt of Dave and we'll get to Dave in a moment here, but uh, Dave's talking about, you know, he's got, he's blaming, like they're talking about WCW in 2000. Right. And, and Dave can point to everything, bad leadership. They're losing money. The show doesn't do good ratings. No one star can carry the show on their own. Doesn't matter who goes there. It's, it's literally what the fuck is happening right now with AEW. But now 
Dave has every excuse. Oh, the hockey game's on. Oh, on PlayStation View, there was more viewers. I had, I had people in my chat going, dude, I have a PlayStation. I don't even know what the fuck <laughs> PlayStation View is. You know? So he's just a dummy. Yeah. And it just feels like there's so much cope and seething. I, I like that term, but just so much cope constantly. And that, to me, I, I think... Um, I don't know. I think that's why they get the reaction is so like heated towards people like you, you or I, even though we do sort of toe that line um, when it comes to AW, because I just feel like now they're like hornets backed into a corner and the or is that a right that's term? A, I don't know. They're just back in a corner. That is, a, the, that is yeah. a perfect analogy for what they are, right? They've always kind of been like hornets, but like now that they're right. backed into a corner, it's just getting loony. And, yeah. and I will say just to go on the record, I have no, problem with tribalism I, everybody tries to pretend like they hate tribalism and they want to be fair and it's so funny because the same aew fans will call people tribal but they'll get into their tribe to call somebody else tribal I know. not having the self-awareness to know that that's tribal in and of itself and i have no problem with that like the tribal mentality is going to happen no matter what at the end of the day, if you take a step back, we cover silly circus professional wrestling. Yeah, dude. It's okay to have tribalism there. Just like being a Packers guy that I hate the Bears. Doesn't mean I want the Bears to go out of business. I yeah. hate the Bears. Like, I want to see the Packers beat the Bears. That's tribalism. And so, like, this idea that you shouldn't be tribal, it's ridiculous. Like, people can have their favorites and, and have tribalism, and that's perfectly fine. So, like, I've never really had all that problem with tribalism. You look at politics. If you want to be president of this country, yeah. The most important job in America. Mm. If you want to be the president and the leader of free world, what is the first thing you have to do? Yeah, pick a side, bro. <laughs> what step do you claim? Are you Democrat? Are you Republican? Do you believe in God? Do you not believe in God? Do you have yep. a dog? Are you married? Are you gay or are you straight? Are you pro-life or are you pro-choice? You have to pick like 18 different tribes to be the leader in this country. Yet, like, we can't do that in fake professional wrestling. Like, I know. It's crazy. And especially when the whole idea is even like within WWE itself, they try to promote like, well, Raw versus Smack. Yeah, Raw's yeah. going to battle SmackDown. And the winner's going to get to hang out with me and God. Just don't check my text messages, please. You can come with me on the plane, but you have to bring kittens. So <laughs> I'm going to bring kittens to all my friends and one puppy. Only one puppy allowed. Sorry. Uh, you, uh, you. <laughs> So uh, speaking of Forbes, sorry, you took a, a lot of people when Forbes eval evaluated or uh, evaluated AEW at two billion. I had a lot of people being like, "Wasn't that Alfred who wrote that?" And I was no. like, no, dude. "I was like, no, dude. He makes fucking jokes. He's not doing financial yeah, Shark Tank, um, Mark Cuban fucking valuations." <laughs> so I was like, "No, dude, definitely not." Um, but what did you make of that when they were valued at like two billion? Were you like, "Come on," you know, or was it? Yeah, you're just like, yeah. That's definitely high, but the thing about valuations, it's it's not real money. It's what you can prove. And exactly, like, yeah. let's somebody, I, I watch, you, you mentioned Shark Tank. It's funny because I watch a lot of Shark Tank. And the thing is, somebody will say, my valuation is this. And the argument and the bargaining comes down to, well, how come you think your company's worth that? You you It costs you $20 to make one of those things. That's going to take your valuation now. So I'm going to buy your company for this much or I'll invest at this valuation. And at the end, it's either, a, it's usually a lower valuation, but like, yeah, this is like AEW. I'm sure their PR team is behind some of this in terms of some of the information that was provided to make people think that it's a $2 billion valuation. Okay, great. They got valued at $2 billion. Yeah. If people believe that it's worth $2 billion, it's worth $2 billion. But if AEW goes to sell, that's the only real time we're going to know what the real valuation is. Right. And I do think that if AEW wanted to sell its company today, I don't think they're getting $2 billion. No, for me neither. Yeah, yeah. But it's just it triggered so many people. And I'm like, who gives a shit? Do you know what valuation yeah. means? It's just a fucking number. Like, it's a number. yeah, my Twitter's worth $7 billion. You know, it doesn't mean it <laughs> is. There you go. You know, um, okay, well, we, you know, we're kind of shitting on AW, and here's the, I bring it up all the time, you know, like there's, there's <clears throat> when I, when I shit on WWE, people just don't get outraged about it. But let's take a minute here, and I want to ask you, what are, can you name like three positives about AEW? Oh, absolutely. I think the wrestling is great. And it's great. if you watch an AEW show, you're going to get great wrestling, but that's also a double edged sword. We always knew there would be great wrestling and great wrestling nowadays. Everybody's got great wrestling. WWE without Vince has now gone up to the level where mm. their wrestling stands up to AEW. 
You know, a 63-year-old man isn't giving them imaginary stars, but their wrestling holds up to AEW. So if you're a great wrestling in a landscape of great wrestling, what do you really have? You know, so the the wrestling is great. Okay, so that's a positive. I, I don't want to get too nice. I'll say another positive is their pay per views almost don't miss. I love their pay per views. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I've paid for every, just about every pay per view for AEW I've watched, and I almost never get disappointed. Sometimes there's you know there's an ending that lets me down, or the main event isn't as good as I thought it was, but they produce high quality pay per views. Mm -hmm. um, and another is that. I will say they're selling out like they were able to fill up Wembley Stadium. That's a great thing. They had CM Punk and they had a lot of right. big stars and they were a little hotter. But no, not just any wrestling company could fill up Wembley Stadium. That is something that whether AEW lives or dies, it's going to be like WCW in the Georgia Dome where they so I believe they almost sold out the Georgia Dome for Goldberg winning that world title. So mm -hmm. there is a lot of good for AEW. And this is one of the reasons why it is so frustrating to see them do so bad. And a lot of that falls on Tony Khan as a booker in that I don't think he's really doing a good job as booking. And I think he's got all this talent, but it's like, you know, it's like watching Steve Wilkes coach the Green Bay Packers or something like that. Like he's this great team, but you got the wrong coach in there. Sorry that Steve Wilkes caught enough stray, but yeah. like, it's like having the wrong coach on a very talented team. And once you fire that coach and you bring in some adult in the room, this is what happened. Like the, the Cleveland Browns is what they are. Once the Browns brought in Kevin Stefanski, they became a playoff contender because they had a lot of talent. But when they had, you know, another coaching staff and they had one failing coaching staff after another, they didn't know what to do with them. Oh, no, everything's great here, man. Great. We're doing a great <laughs> job. It's all great matches. Soda water, you're doing, please. You're doing a great job, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And then let's uh, – we'll, we'll flip it on its ear. What is three – uh cons or, or or give me what is like one or two cons about hey. wwe right now negatives about wwe give me like two uh, i mean i could give you three i'll tell you they're in a post yeah, three give me lull. three negatives about wwe they're in a post wrestlemania lull right now um and which is bound to happen it happens every year i really do think that the i very much enjoy this king and queen of the ring tournament even though it has been a little cursed uh, i've liked the matches i've liked the kind of storytelling and i like the fact that they're using this tournament to help it very much reminds me of the attitude era where you have multiple rivalries you see it with la knight where he he's gonna face uh, tamatanga the bloodline but he's also got something going um with logan paul where they yeah. tease that he's also got something going yeah He's also got something yeah. going with Carmelo Hayes where they tease that. So he's in three rivalries at once. Uh, but I, I will say the post-WrestleMania lull is just kind of uninspiring for WWE. It's obviously not as hot as it was during WrestleMania, but I think inevitably they're going to get to there. Uh, I will say that I'm not a great big fan of Raw right now in particular. It's a long show. Uh, mm -hmm. They do have a lot of good moments, but... WrestleMania season, I would say the last few months of WrestleMania season leading up to Raw, the past couple of years, like they would have incredible angles where the bloodline was red hot. Raw did not feel like a three hour show. But now that Cody's finished the story and we're now building new stories, it definitely does feel like a three hour show. It helps that they have a lot of wrestling through the King and Queen of the Ring. So that kind of makes it go by quicker. But it's back to feeling like Raw. So it's not my favorite thing. And then I will say, uh, to kind of hint to what I'm going to be talking about tomorrow, is this, uh, this whole Tiffany Stratton thing doesn't have me feeling all of that uh, warm and fuzzy right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I, I do think, I want to make it very clear that I think that this was a misunderstanding, I hope, with Tiffany Stratton. When I first saw what happened, I figured, like, she must have not heard the sound. This must be a misunderstanding. But I, I also too. didn't want to just give her the benefit of the doubt. I was also all ears to hear, well, we're going to hear what happened. Like, I need to hear from Tiffany Stratton. What, why did this racist sound end up on your timeline, allegedly? Was it even real? And then WWE responded by saying, Tiffany Stratton is a valued member of this team and management loves her. The end. Mm -hmm. And it's like, everybody moved on. Yeah. And this real journalist, Dave Meltzer, fresh off of giving a lecture to all these journalists about how we need to be asking real questions, all that bullshit. Uh, he's not made a peep about this. And it's no. like, wait a goddamn minute. You would say, okay, yeah, I'm sure management loves Tiffany Stratton. Okay, what does this have anything to do about that? The clip that was posted, they didn't say anything about this. No. They didn't say, well, this was just a mistake. Tiffany didn't hear the sound. Tiffany, this, that, and the third. I just want to hear an explanation. You know, we talk about cancel culture. I do not want Tiffany Stratton canceled. Okay, if this was something that she posted and she thought it was funny to call somebody a black bitch, she's young, immature. It's, I'm not down with it. She's going to have to like prove herself or whatever, but 
I want to hear something. I want to hear either it was a mistake, either this, that, the third, but it just seems like they're trying to sweep this under the rug. And that does not sit well with me as a black person who watches wrestling. Yeah, no. I, you yeah. know what I mean? Who loves Jade Cargill. And even if I did it, like, I need to hear some sort of explanation from Tiffany Stratton as to what happened here. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, to me, the way I thought about it was like, I'm sure she isn't, wouldn't do that knowing she had to go to work and like yeah. get hands from Jade and Bianca the next day. Like, I'm sure there's a night. mistake. But yeah, it is weird, actually. I didn't even think about that. Like, nobody really talked about it. It just kind of went away, you know? We talked about it on, on the podcast. I, I know I did. And um, I don't know. I, I, uh, I just think that maybe she didn't hear it. I, I that could be my only explanation. I think she's too. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Yeah, it'd be awesome if somebody could just provide some insight onto it a little bit. I guess 